Go turning our attention now to Ebony State. Remember, the governor did visit the scene of the attack, after which the vice president, alongside the minister for minister of information as well as uh, minister of state for mines and steel, accompanying the vice president to Ebony State, wherein they met officials, including the governor. But there's been several allegations making the rounds as to what's going on of course impressions as well about investigation where are we at the moment uh, what is are uh, or what are the likely next steps that should be taken in order in order to as people always say such that this will not happen again well joining us this morning to shed light on that particular matter and more We've got Honorable Stanley Okoro Emeha, who is the Commissioner for Internal Security and Border Peace in Ebony State. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today on the program. Well, yes, indeed, uh, what a sad one it was, uh, you know, when the country heard what transpired. Uh, but in light of the Vice President's visit, what is the latest development today as we speak? I'm not sure he can hear us, guys. Um, it's not coming through, is it? All right. Well, I don't know. Maybe you want to unmute your mic if um, you can hear us. Okay. Well, uh, we'll yeah, go work other, uh, other options. Um, apparently, well, there's some technological shortfall right now. But, you know, the question that you ask is valid in that, I mean, one would want to know exactly where the people ultimately yeah. it is about the people. That's the, the issue. Ultimately, it is about the people. So um, I think um, he might want to, he can hear us now, so you may want to go ahead and repeat the question you asked him the other time. Okay, well, um, Mr. Mecha, um just in the, against the backdrop of the president's visits and actions taken so far, want to give us an update how far so far? Thank you so very much and good morning. Um, the one well, must commend Mr. President for quick intervention. You know, it didn't uh, take Mr. President's time to direct uh, the Vice President to visit on his behalf and then to make sure that the uh, security is beefed up. Then I must also commend our governor who quickly called on the federal government to do a deployment of uh, the soldiers and then the other security agencies. So, so far, so good now. There is um, 250 troops deployed in Fium, and there's uh, Fium to take over the whole of the entire area. And then, um, there are 220 police uh, officers deployed in the same that area as uh, and there's uh, Fium. And then, um, in a Gede Gede, what happened in a Gede Gede was a very uh, unbelievable and um, unfortunate incident. Why? Because the headers there have been living in peace with uh, the, the uh, owners of the community. There have never been any issue. So, coming up one night to get such massacre was an unfortunate incident. But... Uh, the place is saturated with uh, security agencies now to make sure that uh, normalcy, full normalcy returns. And uh, as such, for three good days now, there have been normalcy in those new warring communities. So far, you have uh, mentioned about three communities. Are these the only communities affected by this, in this mayhem? Have we been able to track the exact cause? the real reason behind these attacks we must we must uh, tell you that nobody can say that this was actually the cause because the community hadn't any issue it was no any issue at all there had never been any quarrel with the elders and the the, the community people the, sometime last year there was a small uh, minor misunderstanding which the community insisted that the people that carried the act of killing uh, a Fulani person was brought to book. Then they are still facing the trial. So, but 
but how the the Fulani leaders, many leader, uh, many leaders left the state it was a surprising thing. None of us knew that they were relocating, and then they relocated, and then this thing happened. So it was like a a, a plan, a stage plan by them. But very unfortunately, uh, some of them are enjoying the appointment of the governor here, yeah? the same way we are enjoying. But what cropped up there? See, today the community people cannot say yes, this was the problem, and there was no any issue, nothing at all, nothing at all, because we have a very good platform for which in anything that happens between the headers and the farmers, we have a platform for where we resolve it. And so it is that if you kill their cow, we must compare the government. The people that are the leaders of the community must pay for the cow. Whatever they give as the price, they will pay for it. And then if you destroy the crop, you must pay. And it has been working. So there was no issue. It, now we can't press out and say that this was what actually happened that resulted to such massacre. There, there was word that uh, some persons had been arrested previously before that attack occurred and then they were already going through the process of uh, ensuring that they were brought to book. Is that process still on? Of course, yes. Those people are still in the awaiting trial. Yes. Uh, we how about, have there been fresh arrests concerning this particular matter with a view to tracing and then bringing to book those who were responsible for it? You mean the particular incident now? Yes, yes, the security agencies are doing something. They are doing something. And they're very soon, because there was an evidence, we picked up a phone of one of the, the, the people that attacked the community. So we are pressing, and then the, the security agencies are handling that one. They are handling it. Okay, right. How and many people say, have been arrested in connection with this very recent attack? Well, I, I, cannot, I cannot say for sure, but I believe very strongly that the security agencies are on top of the matter. Because, I mean, you would expect that right after such heinous attack, there will be a lot of attention. As, as you said, there's been a lot of uh, security deployment. But, you know, listening to the chairman of AFIPO, for example, saying that herders have been dealing with our people, they have been polluting our water, they have been operating in lawlessness. Now, that is not a thing uh, that one would say maybe started yesterday. This is according, I mean, with the wording, something that has been on for a while. So before we even discuss this, you know, latest attack and what happens afterwards, what about those times that the attacks and the lawlessness that the Africa chairman said uh, has continued? What did the government do at that time? Because it would seem that this has now spiraled into what we're seeing now. Now, you, you, those incidences have been happening. And you know, in a family, there's always an, a time that a husband who have a small misunderstanding with a wife. That does not mean that they don't resolve. They will still settle. We have been having these small, small pockets of uh, misunderstanding on all the areas they live. And uh, we have been resolving amicably. We have a, a, a committee, state committee, that comprises the security chiefs, and then the HAG and my very self, and then the SIG of the state. So we have been, on a monthly basis, we have been sitting down, Analyzing any area that we are there, we have an issue, analyzing and then coming up with a solution. And then it has been working very well. It got to the level that we have to bring some of the, the leaders of the NATO into government so that they cannot say that the government is taking a decision against their people. So it has been working very well. So it wasn't an issue. They have been doing all those things, but we have been having a settling amicably. So, but what resulted to such massacre is what nobody can 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 think of. Nobody can believe that this is a particular thing. And uh, more especially in that particular location. Can you share some light on what you mean by you had to bring them into government? Like giving the governor had to give them appointments. Uh, some of them are TAs. Some of them are supervisory councillors representing some areas in the local government. Um, now that this attack happened, are they being asked questions? Are they still in those positions? What's the thinking now? Of course, yes, they are still in those positions. And the, the, the view of the, the, the state 
committee of the Metial are working very hard to find out what actually happened. They also surprised. It is few of them that relocated. They also surprised. Uh, not aware, or at least they don't have a part to play in this recent attack that just happened, right? Yes. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't get that. They, we, the governor cannot relieve them. It is not possible to, for him to relieve them. You see that. Hello, so when you, you said me? that this, yes, I can hear you. Go on, go on, please. Okay, okay. they are still in those, those positions. They are still in those positions. I'm just trying to, you know, draw uh, a line here because, I mean, when you say they have been in government, they've been invited to the government, I mean, those are the Fulani herders. And then, on the other hand, you say that herders are also responsible for the killings. So uh, you're saying that the ones in government are not the ones responsible, at least they don't have any link with those responsible for these killings? Of, of course, yes, they don't have any link. I don't think they have any link. They are still in government and they are also still working very hard with me to see if we can arrive and actually what happened. Now, going back to this recent attack, because it's quite important to lay out the facts. If the villagers are quite sure, and in fact you are quite sure that these attacks were carried out by herders. So it brings to question those measures that you said have been put in place that seemed to be working. Were they working for both parties or it was just working for the farmers and not the herders? They were working for their people to make sure that their people don't feel marginalized. To make sure that they don't say yeah, government made and then took a decision against their people. That is why we brought them in. That is why we brought them in. Okay. Well, so you, earlier you did uh, refer to about over 200 uh, security personnel who are in Eza FM. What can you tell us about uh, those attacks which has been going on for months where I mean, I know you must have seen that report about 55 of the 66 persons who were arrested uh, said to have either been released or escaped. What is the current position on that? Well, honestly, I've made a statement to that effect, and I don't think that I can really go back to that uh, particular question. I've made a statement, and it is everywhere in the social media. You made a statement, you're Commissioner for Internal Security and Border Protection. Many people are accusing, I know you've seen the petition, they're accusing the state government of complicity in the matter. Have you made a statement about that as well? How can you accuse state government? When I said that uh, the deputy governor was at the scene, and the judge was at the scene, and then we saw these people, we insisted that they must be packed to Abakale case. If not for anything, for questioning, to know how such a such a war will be going on there, and of the 66 young looking rough youth will be in one particular place. And a lot of things were recovered from there. When the governor has made, made an order that if you see anybody with gun, they demobilize the person. What else are we waiting for? So how they, whether they have been released or they, they, they are still in the custody of police, all we know is that uh, I've made a statement. I've made a statement. They were released, yes. So if the police have they arrested them, they should be paraded so that uh, they will know that the government don't have a hand. We, the, the governor of the state has sunk in so much to make sure that uh, the crisis, the crisis is stopped. The crisis, but of sabotage among themselves, there, yeah, sabotage, you know. But in all, we believe very strongly that uh, those were things that has come and then the deeds are done and they has passed. Presently now, we have enough security there now to make sure that such things don't happen again. And for three days now, there have never been any shooting there again. Honorable Commissioner, when you say sabotage, by whom and in what specific ways? By the indigenous of the place, by the indigenous. There are some stakeholders that are feeding fat. From, there are some politicians that want to discredit the state, what the governor is doing. So they were the people feeling it. People that you talk about being identified by the state and have they been handed over or a list of them being given to security agencies? Yeah, even the security agencies, they are aware. 
the, the opposition party, the PDP party, have uh, have uh, a hand in what is happening there. They have a hand in what is happening there. Well, this is curious. Well, there, there was also uh, uh, a statement credited to the governor saying that um, it would appear that the governor was suggesting that the local herdsmen initially knew something about the latest attacks, uh, latest killings, saying that the governor said they vacated despite all efforts that the government and governors of the Southeastern Security Agencies are making to give them full protection. It was after they vacated the area that these attacks happened. Is that correct? Yes. You know, we have coordinators, like uh, in initially local government, we have a Meiti Ala coordinator, who is supposed to be reporting to us whatever thing that is happening with their people there, and the, all the locations where their people settles there. So the, the, the aim of the appointment is for him to be visiting them from time to time to make sure how they are feeling and then know if there is any issue between the people, the elders, and then the community people. And then all of a sudden, that particular coordinator couldn't disappeared, relocated, and the state chairman of Vetiala relocated without the knowledge, without the notice of anybody. So that is what raised to the suspicion that, yes, they couldn't have relocated without letting the development center coordinator or the local government council chairman to know. Or they will have to come to the state and let the state committee be aware that, yes, the person wants to relocate to another place. Still talking about the killings in Ezra Fium community, uh, some of the residents, they petitioned, they're asking that if the reason why they're accusing the government is that since this started in January, why did the government wait till now first to deploy this amount of security? And then the secondly, they also say, why is it remembering just now to order the rearrest of Barrister Clement other and others and proposed their suspension? You see, the governor is a governor that is running the state with a human face. When they were arrested, when this incident started, he called the people. And then told them that they should put a stop to this, that they should love each other. And then when the, the thing persisted, he arrested them. It was still the same their stakeholders from there that called the governor that they cannot, because they have this voice that has in the place. These bandits, they have them, that he should release them from detention to go and meet the people and talk to the people. And that was the promise they made. And if the killing started... Not that, the governor didn't, not that the governor didn't know that he should deploy security. They deployed both the army and then the, the, the police. Enough security agencies were deployed to the place. But they overpowered them based on that they were now importing machineries from neighboring states. Why is it, because if it started since January, they also ask, why is he just declaring curfew now? Because this is the second time. It has been before, and then the, the, the area was calm for about two weeks until another person went from behind and then sparked it up again by killing one of the, the other community. Okay, Commissioner, I mean, quite a lot of issues now. I mean, from the herders attacking, uh, you know, the villagers to, I think, community or communal crisis which you are referring to right now and you've also talked about some politicians uh, fueling this and sabotaging the efforts of the state government is there any uh, differentiating these issues such that we know what is responsible for what in what area what is responsible for what in another area just so we don't model this up because for some people they are thinking okay from the herders uh, to the people then you mentioned bandits then politicians how do you you know differentiate with areas as well Start modeling it up. Take it from this angle. The PDP party will always want to catch in on anything to discredit the government. That is just the obvious fact. They saw it as an opportunity, and then they started sponsoring some of these boys to go into the place and then be killed. The governor has visited there before the vice president's visit. He has visited there more than five times, just talking to them. So you're saying that the community. Um, people are responsible for the killings? Yeah, they are, they are responsible for the, the war going on. It is a long hatch uh, in the they have been They have been waiting for a, a small thing to spark it up. And then it was an opportunity. 
You know, this is Reza and Reza Chum. These are two communities that have lived together for a very long time. And now Supreme is who reigns Supreme, comes into them. And then the opposition party hijacks it. They, they, they use this as an opportunity to start bringing people from anywhere. This what? attack was not only Chum and Reza Chum indigenous attacking themselves. Missionaries came into the, into the attack. Members of that community, incidentally, are accusing them. In fact, let me even read verbatim part of the statement credited to them. They said the governor should be reminded that in 2016, when Oda was appointed caretaker committee chairman of Ahauku local government era, he was caught with guns by security agents, and Domahi did not suspend him for unlawfully buried arms. Rather, uh, his government use the connection to facilitate his release from prison custody. Police custody, rather. Who, 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 is, who is to be blamed? Are you blaming the security agencies? Or are you trying to put the blame to the government? The, I mean the, the, the government for government, this complicity. The has never in any time intervened on the, on the works of the security agencies. If there was anybody, including me, I am not above the law. If there be anything... Anything they find in me that is incriminating, the security agencies should do their work. Yeah, but if they are saying that the governor didn't take action against the person in question in 2016, isn't that some culpability? Because that is the way they see it. Everything, anything that happens, they will always take the blame to government, take the blame to the governor. Why won't I am saying it? Why won't the security agency? Is there something that you can tell me to do? I will insist that I'm, I want to do it. No, no, because it is my office. But right now, as it is today, uh, with all of these killings going on, in fact, they say that there's an ulterior motive saying there is huge mineral deposits in that area, and that is what they want to take advantage of. Is that, is that the only place mineral deposit is in the Boeing State? The answer is no. Why can't they manage themselves? Why can't they manage themselves? Is that the only community in the Boeing State that there is a huge mineral deposit? The answer is no. So does that then suggest that it's either they manage themselves or they let it fester? Because we thought that that is why government is there, to protect lives and property. Is doing very greatly. The government is doing very greatly, very, very, very greatly. So if you see the community and know how complex they live together, how complex in that place, and the largeness of the place, and then the border areas that surround the place, the particular community we are talking about, you know that the government has put in more than enough. Unless it's stakeholders, you arrest them and hand over to the police. The same people from High places will call and say, release them, let them go and talk to their people. They have been living together. It is not the same time they have been having this issue. During the, uh, uh, Governor Lechi's time, they had issues. Some every time they had issues. Maybe that is what they use in blessing anybody that comes into power. From government's perspective now, how many people have been killed in this matter? It's very difficult to, to say exact. But we know it was up to up to eighty something. It was ab a little above eighty, but very difficult to determine that yes, it was exact this or that. Honourable Commissioner, uh, just as my colleague asked earlier, the question there would be: Is there an end in sight to ensure that this not only is uh, the justice is not only served as the Vice President has promised? But that it does not happen again. Yeah, I assure you that uh, with the measures put in place now, the, the, the all of these areas will never get that kind of crisis again. It will not happen again. With the measures put in place now. What of measures? Uh, deployment of securities, and uh, we are adding our civilian securities also there now to make sure that uh, they could keep the area calm. You just heard uh, my colleague uh, Chamberlain reading out the petition of a particular community and there it's quite damning a number of things that they have said. So is there any plan by government to at least engage with them to assuage some of their fears and feelings? 
Of course, yes. You see, the, the area now, the deputy governor of the state visits that area almost every day now. It is part of the measure. And the, the forest in question that these woodlumps will run into is going to be cut down. It's going to be cut down completely. The place is already cuddled with security agencies, the soldiers. So we'll give that area as a base to the military now until the, uh, the area is totally calm. So the, what we are working hard now is to make sure that the, the, the people return back to their homes, the building of the place, and then making sure that, yes, they get their life going again. From what you have said, this arrangement, this uh, high number of security personnel is an interim measure. What is the long-term plan to forestall a recurrence? The, the, the stakeholders have now entered into an agreement that if any of these other side violates it, then the government will hold them responsible. And I believe very strongly that um, they, 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 they are intense. They have felt the impact of war now, and they can never wish to have such a thing again in their area. Like I said earlier, 60% of this thing was being caused by them. They were unable at the initial stage to accept and then talk to their people. But as it gets on, they have now realized that uh, it, was, um, it wasn't favorable. War is a wind that blows nobody any good, and then they have felt the, the, the impact of war now. I know that there was a, well, a request to the federal government for certain monies to at least help in the rebuilding process from the state government. Uh, what's the word on that? Yeah, the, you know, the government has concluded arrangements in setting up a committee. The government of the state will only supervise whatever thing that the federal government send down to the communities. They will only play supervisory role. Then the both sides have come together to set up a committee that eventually if the fund arrives, they will be taking it stage by stage. Then if it is to re-roof, they will re-roof. Uh, but the state government has procured a lot of relief materials, so we, which we are going to commence immediately in distributing now, that we know that normal self returns there. The, the people you are, you are taking back, at least to their homes and communities, where, will, where then will they stay if, you know, the reconstruction has not commenced or, or at least has not been completed? Where will they be staying then? We raise it down. There are still some buildings standing. There are still some buildings standing. There are some of the communities out of here run away from their, their homes. So just to reach to them to come back. There are still buildings standing. Right. So, Because um, I know that the federal government said that they will not bring aid until the communities are in peace. And you seem to be quite certain that this will not happen again. But I'm, I'm really curious here because you hear security operatives tell you there's kinetic and non-kinetic. Kinetic. They tell you there's a carrot and the stick. They tell you there's the you know, political solution to this. So specifically, you say, if you say this is a supremacy uh, battle or what, what have you, for what purpose? Have you been able to get down to the root of the problem? Because I still feel that if this is not done, I mean, we've had over 80 people killed. Who knows what lies ahead in the future? So have you been able to get to the root cause of this, beyond the supremacy battle that you say you think it is? Yeah, it's quite a number of things they mentioned, and they mentioned it to the governor. And that is why I told you that a committee had been set up from the both sides, from the both sides, to come up with a lasting solution. It is a problem that they must by themselves because they have the history of their place. So they are to the people in better position to say this is, and they have been living in peace. A particular section, the chairman said that they want the demarcation. And then the exert the some people said, no, we have been living together. We want to continue to live together. And that is how we should be. And it is a position that the state government is taking. Because it is difficult to demarcate. It's difficult. Based on the way they, they, they live, they have been living together that way for decades. So as such, nobody is thinking of dividing or demarcating them. Rather, it is that last thing piece and which I believe very strongly.
all of them has come to the table. All of you, them has uh, come to the table. So earlier on, when you accused the PDP, in fact, specifically, of being responsible for some of these attacks, fueling these attacks, uh, what proof do you have? Because if there's going to be a political solution and you're accusing the PDP, one wonders, how then will that happen? Uh, I tell you that the, the, the PDP, why I say they have a hand, they saw the opportunity, hijacked it because... They are thinking that it is an avenue, a good avenue for them to be discrediting the, the effort of the government. How is it that this has been difficult to address, given the fact that this is the governor's second term, he's been in PDP, so one would have thought that he knows his way around all of these things and should have put in place measures, uh, perhaps uh, carried out by yourself being the commissioner in charge of that area, to ensure that these killings don't happen, especially when you said it has been happening even before this government came into power, and the governor has also been in power before now. You, you see that that of Ezulo. You see, after Ezulo crisis, we have never had this kind of crisis in the brain. That of Ezulo, the governor controlled it, and this one is going to control it. And I assure you, and I continue to assure you, that there is nothing that will make such a thing happen again here. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Didn't get that clarity as to why it had to wait months since January up until now for that amount of security personnel to have been deployed. But if you then say that, uh, well, as it is now, these kind of things will not happen, what's going to happen to? Uh, all those houses and families, what kind of meetings or actions is the governor taking beyond deployment of security agencies there to ensure that there's some sort of reconciliation and then that issue is addressed permanently? Well, I, I told you that the committee, a committee among them has been set up. One, well, the com committee is saddled with the responsibility of ascertaining the number of buildings that were raised down. The committee is ascertaining the owner's of those buildings and the way they are, then the committee will ascertain the cost of f fixing it back. And you know, these things must not be done once. And then the same that committee will be saddled with the responsibility of feeding the, the project committee that is going to handle the, the, the committee. Assessment committee is, going, is different from the committee that is going to do the building. They will assess and then hand over to the committee that will review why the government of the state will now start for everything that is going to be happening there. Is in the fact that it is about communities. I mean, you are talking to the community leaders, but the question then would be how effectively, how, uh, how strongly are we carrying along the members of that community? That perhaps would be the challenge because while you are talking to some people, some others may not get the memo. So it's, it's important to be able to at least assure the people that their best interests are being considered by government, whether at this, community, this uh, you know, committee level that you talked about or even at a higher level of government. That, that is exactly what I'm saying. The community, like I told you, that the deputy governor will be visiting the place almost on daily basis, together with the security chiefs. So, one, we are not going to there to just go and turn around. We are going to be having a meeting with these community leaders, the prime ministers and the others, even their stakeholders that reside outside the community. They are all going to be coming home. For us to make sure that, yes, whatever thing that is agreed is implemented fully. So, when you accuse the PDP of having a hand in it, does the government have specifics? Uh, are people arrested within the party? What's going on that since you have it on good authority that they have a hand in it? Yeah, the, I think the security agencies are aware. And because the governor has been sending it to, to call them and talk to them. Hiring of missionaries is not coming from a local person. The local man that is in the community there cannot pay for those arms. The kind of arms that have been re recovered from there cannot be coming from somebody that is not... You know, the, 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 the community has a common border, boundary with uh, Benue. So they, they have been using it as an opportunity to just 
discrediting the government. They know all the whole of these areas. They have these boys. They will tell them to go and bring your boys. Mind you that some of these people have been arrested and are still in detention. Some confessional statements have been made. As I said, it is left for the police to do their work and then handle it professionally. And the governor has been also warning them that they should do their work if they choose to do it. Okay, we have to go there and help. Make sure that yes, we control the system there. But the security agencies are aware. And the governor has been lamenting on this. Up to these people, let them get their, their hands off. It's about the blood. It's about the blood of the people. It's about since, the since, um, since you accuse the PDP of uh, complicity in this matter, we've reached out to uh, Mr. Silas Ono. He's a legal practitioner, so should understand the implications of all of these things. He's also the spokesperson of the PDP in a Bonny state. He joins us this morning on the line to respond to the allegations uh, leveled against his party. Good morning and thank you for joining us today on the program. So having heard from the commissioner now, I mean, does that then mean that your party uh, harboring terrorists in the manner of speaking, those who are associated with this matter? Because he says confessions have been made by those who've been arrested. What's going on? I didn't, get, I didn't get your question, please. Uh, can you put me through your question again? Can you hear me first? Yeah, I can hear you now. Well, the commissioner has accused your party, saying that they have a hand in the killings going on in Ezefiom community, and that some members of the party have been arrested, they're in custody, and confessions have been made by them on the matter. Well, uh, very interestingly, uh, with uh, an unguarded utterance such as this coming from the Commissioner for Internal Affairs as Internal Security, it will be safe to conclude that the crisis in the Zion community was deliberately orchestrated. Political goal. <clears throat> the crisis in the Zion Everybody knew the genesis of that crisis. As I speak to you, I'm a wanted man in Ebony State for calling on the government to arrest the perpetrators of violence in Ebony State as an opposition uh, spokesperson. I am not from Meza. I'm not from Ephium. Nobody in PDP has any interest in the crisis in Meza Ephium. And uh, we do not want to control road uh, uh, transport union. The crisis in Azarfium is largely a cult war. It's largely a cult war that have degenerated into a community crisis because the government is involved. The local government chairman of Onku is directly involved. The House of Senate is directly involved. And they were not even made uh, uh, subjects of questioning until the police arrested them some time ago and the PDP praised the police for being proactive and called on the government to ensure that these people are prosecuted and duly punished if found guilty. And then the governor turned around and said the PDP is using their pen through the spokesperson to cause crisis in Ezaifio. What kind of governance is that? Why do a, 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 an elected official use the life of people to play politics and the commissioner will come on air to defend it? It tells you that they have never had interest in stopping the killing in Ezaifio. The whole battle was an attempt to control road union transport workers. Between uh, the parts of us who are presently in detention, they be arrested. So for this man to come on air and be saying there are PDP members who have been arrested and have made confession, he just tells lies, tell lies without even blinking. He should name the PDP members that they have arrested, apart from their engineered uh, arrest of our youth leader for making attempt to 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 assess our secretariat. Our party secretariat, 
that the governor has now decided to seal, saying he's using COVID-19 protocol to seal it. Is it by force for everybody to join you in APC? The state is a PDP state, and nobody will join Dave Omahi and his people in APC. So they keep orchestrating all kinds of violence, stories, to accuse everybody. The other day, the vice president was there. They were gathered. And the vice president... not that great uh don't know if you can still hear me uh because when the people are dying needlessly and they want to say politics to me i can hear you great so we lost the at least some part of what you said about the vice president's visit but uh the initial point where the commissioner pointedly said that members of your party have been arrested for culpability in the matter and that confessional statements have been made. You, in turn, are saying that it was, what, a fabricated arrest and that those cases were forged? Is that your point? Because if that's the case, does that then mean that ultimately, when they get to the court, that is when all those matters will be sorted? Now, very interestingly, let me even begin from the judiciary, and then I'll take you to... It will be interesting to hear him mention one PDP member that was arrested in respect of the Azarafian crisis. It will be very interesting. I want to hear the name of that person. He should name them. Is the local government chairman a member of PDP? Is the House of Assembly member now who have joined the governor in APC? Is he a member of PDP? No member of PDP has been arrested unless he is planning to go and arrest some people now and then try to concoct charges and, and blame them for it. No member of PDP have been arrested. Let him mention one name. The police recently declared 18 people wanted. I do not think any of those people belong to any of the political parties. They are members of the communities being used by the local I don't know what this man is trying to achieve by coming on air to lie blatantly. And again, we go to the judiciary. In Ebony State, we have a new chief judge now, so we're hoping he will be different from the one that just left. Magistrates in Ebony State were mandated by the chief judge, by the governor, through the chief judge, to ensure that whoever is arraigned before them, whoever is arraigned before them, is remanded in prison, rightly or wrongly. Now, when they arrested our youth leader, and they said he broke into our own secretariat, our own secretariat, that he broke into it. They took him to the magistrate court, and the chief magistrate granted him bail, because this man is a lawyer. Granted him bail, because the law allows him to. That chief magistrate is now facing this very uh, proceeding. They want to sack him for doing his job. They want to sack him. Now, all other magistrates in the state, the moment you are arraigned before them, you are remanded in prison and you are forgotten there. There is a lawyer presently in prison for making Facebook posts critical of APC. They threw him in prison. So there is no trial in the Bonnie State High Court that anybody will take seriously because they have been completely conquered. We hope the new chief judge will depart from that uh, practice and assert the independence of the judiciary and be for all the people of the Bonnie State, not just for the government. So, if you hear this commissioner speaking the way he does, it's because they have an assurance that once they arrange you in court, you will be detained, you will be, you'll be remanded in prison. And well, Mr. Ono, you know, as a legal practitioner, you, you do know that um, no matter the impression people have of the judiciary or however they disagree with any court judgment, in case of court judgment, it has to be vacated first before you move on to the next thing. So whatever ruling comes from them is always valid. Well, that said, let's get the commissioner to respond to some of the uh, responses that you gave about him saying nobody from your party was arrested. Commissioner, he says, uh, as far as they are concerned, no one of their party is arrested. Is there any member of the PDP in police custody do you know now? Thank you so very much. You know, it is not, um, it's not uh, my nature in joining issues with uh, people. 
and more especially that borders in the area of of uh, politics because whatever that is happening in the state is a particular thing. You come out, you say it. And um, I assure you that we really miss the governor when he leaves office. We are talking about uh, no judiciary. You are talking about you know, the police have the record. The people are there. The police have the record. Very soon, we will unfold all the whole of these things. It, they, they are there. They, they, we collected their phones. The security agencies have screwed the phones. There are text messages. There are text messages. Inciting. Don't you know that the inciting of war is, is higher than, than buying arms? Inciting. When some people make inciting statements, sparking the war, they wouldn't know that, yes, they are also contributing to the war. It's not in my nature. But I know too very well that those people are still in the custody of the police or they have been taken to court. Then the police will very soon make those things available to the public. So when Mr. Salas Onu said that he is currently a wanted person in a Boyi state, can you confirm that? Can police just come out and declare somebody wanted if the person has not committed something? That question should go to the security agencies that declare them wanted. Okay. Well, Mr. Onu, it would seem that the commissioner uh, is not aware of that wanted status which you say that uh, you currently have in a Boeing state. So on what authority do you make that? The, the, the commissioner doesn't seem to be part of the government he claimed to be serving. The commissioner for information confirmed my declaration to journalists. It was reported. I can share the, the, the news report with you. He confirmed it. So when will the Commissioner for Information say one thing and the Commissioner for Internal Security say another thing? The government didn't deny it unless he is trying to deny it now. And uh, I didn't hear anything he said, actually, maybe poor connection. I didn't hear anything he said. Uh, I was trying to turn on the television, but I was uh, worried about uh, the, the, the hall bar. So if the Commissioner claims he doesn't know that the government of the boy state declared me wanted. Of course, it to be obvious, you can see that he doesn't even have an office. He's, he's doing his recording from government house guest room. Uh, so uh, he may not be part of the government. Uh, it's typical of the governor. He takes the decision uh, alone and then later regrets it. So maybe he's regretting that declaration because he doesn't have the power. The law is clear. No governor can declare you wanted. And when I wrote my complaint to the DGDSS and the IGP, I clearly stated that that declaration was a cover for the thugs that they use to attack me whenever I'm in the States. I know they are modus operandi. The man speaking now, what qualification does he have for security? What has he done before in the security sector that qualifies him to be SA or Commissioner for Internal Security? No. Probably a, 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 a record of violence and brigandage was his only qualification. So the Ebony state has been a state that has been in the, in the shadow. Nobody has shone their light in that state. So the governor comes out and deceives everybody. We want this, the, the, the whole nation to know what is happening in the Ebony state. And we tell God that the vice president visited. We tell God that uh, perhaps the federal government will have uh, a renewed interest in the crisis in Ezra Recently, some uh, stakeholders in the community accused the governor of orchestrating the violence because of mineral resources in their communities. I do not know uh, the validity of the accusation, but you can see that all fingers point to the government. All point to oh, the Mr. government. Mr. Ono, so he says, you? the commissioner says, it's not the government that declared you wanted, it's the police that declared you wanted. Confused. He's confused. There is also a publication of the police, of those they declared wanted, 18 names. And the day the police made their publication, I did a press release saying I've been vindicated. I've been vindicated because the police have made their press release and have released the name of people they want. And all of these people are from Ephraim, Ezra community. I'm not from Ezra, Ephraim, but I've never been there in fact. So for him to try and turn around and try to blame the police now shows how incompetent he is. Shows that he doesn't even know the, 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 the purpose of his job.
All right, Mr. Ono, we, we, we need to wrap up at, that, at this point. Uh, we do thank you both, uh, Silas Ono, a legal practitioner and uh, the spokesperson of the PDP in Ebony State, as well as uh, Honorable Stanley Okoro Emeha, the Commissioner for Internal Security and Border Peace at Ebony State. Gentlemen, thank you both for your time this morning. All right, let's move right on and take some of the messages coming through from those who are watching. Oh, yes. Let's go ahead. Of them. Let me start with this one from uh, Chibo Namdi, and it's tweeted about security, saying, I'm baffled that people who kidnap and kill in the north end up as bandits. Others destroy government properties and free inmates in the south, and they are called terrorists by the president. That's inconsistency, he says. But you know what? Crime is crime. Mm. Okay, so it should be treated it. as such. Yeah. Uh, uh, Onyobi says, Onyobi, beg your pardon, says the Nigeria police knows who attacked or prison and force headquarters a few minutes after attack, but they don't know who attacked an Ebony community more than one week after attack. Wow. Well, Dr. Kwanza says the resident doctors should also make compromises and work with the leadership of the health sector in the interest of the patients. If they've signed memo of action, they should stick to it. Not quite. Well, Harry has this one talking about the health sector as well. Doctors have excelled in leadership and management of health institutions globally where they are unencumbered by anachronistic civil service procedures and suffocating into professional rivalry. Leadership recruitment in Nigeria, in, including for the health sector, is 40 and uh, looking at this one from was born as well, uh, Sam was born says about this time last year I lost my brother-in-law. His case was exacerbated because of resident doctors' strike back then. It's a clear case of government ineptitude. That another strike is on again, one year later, scandalous and preposterous. The effects of the strike are real, and for those who bear the pain. They know it. It's 100%. Nothing ever replaces the lives that are lost. So we continue to ask those who are on strike and also those who have the responsibility to call them back and ensure uh, that their, whatever agreements have been signed are met you know, to do the needful. People are losing their loved ones. Thank you for watching this morning. I'm Mark Welgri Yusuf. Well, I'm Kairi Okikielu. Really, what is even more uh, you know, gruesome about this, gentlemen, is that people get wounded during insecurity such as this, and there are no doctors in hospitals to take care of them. It is really dire. Maya McKinney, have a good day. I'm Chamberlain, so we'll see you tomorrow.